Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. Your goodness and your mercy. Your presence. Your healing presence. Your anointing presence. Your powerful presence. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for what it means to be in you. You in us. Thank you, Christ Jesus, for your obedience unto death, even the death of the cross. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you for your peace that passes understanding. Thank you for the way of righteousness in which you're teaching us and you're bringing us along into the fullness of Christ Jesus, our Lord. We give your name all the praise. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We don't have a teacher except you teach. We receive now the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God to strengthen us with might in the inner man that we would know the hope of your calling, Master, the rich inheritance that you are in us, the saints. We give your name all the praise. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's a wonderful time to be living in the spirit. I'll say that. I mean, sometimes people say be here, but I don't know where here is for everybody, but I know where here is in the spirit. And I'm telling you, it's a wonderful time to be in the spirit, in Christ, in God. Thank the Lord for that. We are looking, um, I, we're just obeying God. And the last few sessions, we've been focused on how Man's concepts are keeping us from experiencing God. And Bishop Paul has touched on so many things in his exhortation in the praise. I'm telling you, man's watered-down version, his, his ideas of the way things should have been, the way he filled in the blanks instead of seeking Almighty God for his wisdom. And people took it hook, line, and sinker. Just like Bishop Paul was saying, who said this looks good and that doesn't look good? You don't have that in spirit. You don't have that type of judgment in spirit. There's just righteous judgment. The beautiful examples that the Lord Jesus give us in scripture help us so much. And we touched on it when we came together Wednesday, when we looked at the woman caught in adultery. We'll go back to that again. I did, Wednesday I did the read you. From the read to you rather from the Phillips New Testament translation, but I'm going to the King James Version and um, John's Gospel, chapter 8. I just have it written down here, so I don't really have to turn to it. But John, chapter 8, if you want to listen, I want to go over the first 11 verses again. Now, those of you that were here Wednesday, don't you worry. Uh, how, how many of you know manna is manna, but it's new every day? All right, so don't you worry at all, okay? Praise the Lord. He has some wonderful things in, in store for us. The thing is, like Bishop Paul just, just touched on, see, Christ Jesus saw the spiritual being versus the sinner in his ministry. You see that? He knew what he came to do, but he saw the spiritual being. And that's what we have to do. See, we claim to have Christ. But when I say we, I'm talking about the church. Listen to most of the church today. You get criticized. You still, even though you, a, a minister has baptized you, heard you confess Christ as Lord, and will still treat you like a sinner. Especially if something comes to their ear that maybe it was something that they didn't agree with. And that, this is where... We're going to have to realize that we're in the kingdom and stay that way. Your speech, what you're thinking, is going to have so much effect. And we said, we asked God, and he's answering us. We said we want to experience God. So we're going to experience God. It's going to, not going to be might nor power, not by man's wisdom. It's going to be by the Spirit of God and by the Spirit of God alone. We're going to see this as we look at a couple of ex few examples of Jesus and how he ministered, and I want us to hear something. This, um, this finding fault automatically in something. You are, or I would be filtering it through something we have learned that came from the tree of good and evil. It did not come from the tree of life, no matter what it is. I was just thinking, I said, um, 
you take somebody back in history that's just what, what everybody would say is a heinous person. Let me, let me just think about this. Did, did Adolf Hitler fly one of the planes of the, of the Luftwaffe? No. Did he dive the submarines? Did he do it himself? You see what I'm saying? So what? Power was given to him. Yes. You see that? Yes. The, the, it, the God that's in us was in him. It's just a matter of it being touched. You understand that? Praise the name of the Lord. When you get people that want to follow after something because they want to feel good about it, about something, then that's how you keep getting off into these denominations and things. Alone, he couldn't have done the damage that was done. That history tells us that was done. You understand that? Yeah. So we got to stop judging after the sight of our eyes, like Bishop Paul reminded us from Scripture, and realize that it's righteous judgment. I don't care who we see. You see somebody staggering down the boulevard, you, the first thought should come to your mind is that's a child of God. The first thought should come to your mind. The first one. The very first one. Praise the name of the Lord. See, God is going to have a people unto himself. A people unto himself, not what we want, but what his will is for us. And his will for us is what? To do his good will and pleasure, which is what? Love one another and love him. See that? Hallelujah. So the whole thing has been from eating this tree of good and evil. Now, all of a sudden, this is good and that's good. Well, who told you that? And all the things that we call good. You could, like I said, you could go on the other side of the world and somebody say, that's not good for us. That's not good. That's terrible. We never do that. You see? So we get what? Righteous judgment. Just seeing God. Seeing, seeing God and what? Our lives. We don't realize the power in these tongues. And the first thing something to want to do when you hear a message like this it's come, it's, you, it's, it seems like it's aggravating you so that you will speak something that you shouldn't be speaking. You understand this? Glory to the name of the Lord. So we can hear it. Praise, praise his holy name. John chapter 8 verse 1. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. What's happening here? If, if the word of God... Who Jesus is, the scriptures tell us he's the word made flesh. If the word of God is teaching the people, what are they hearing? The spirit of the word. You hear that? Praise God. Which is, I hope we recognize what we're hearing here. The spirit of the word. Alright? Verse 3. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. They had, when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. You see this? Now look what happened here. Just stop and think. Religion, which is based on good and evil. What you been learning in church? I've been learning what's good. I've been learning what's evil. You have, and that's church. Not by the Spirit of God, it's not. Y'all hear God? You starting to hear the difference in this right here? No, it's not. Well, how are we going to know that you, look. I don't care if you one you you two years old. You know something working in you Amen. that knows when it's when it's, it's it's of God and when it's something else. Y'all hear this? Yeah. You hear this right here with the things that we've been trained and fed again and again off that off that tree of good and evil. Look what it does. Look what religion does now. Comes and sets law in the midst when spirit is teaching. You hear this? Listen to it the way God is teaching us. Law comes and sets this woman. She's caught in, a, in adultery. We're going we're gonna to find out what he's going to do about it. And if he doesn't do what we think he should do about it, then we'll have something to accuse him of. So see how the law works? I'm telling you now, you can go all around any place and people are gathered together. And they say they're gathered together in the name of the Lord, but they are being accused. You hear me? They are being accused because what? They are being fed from the tree of good and evil. They are not being fed from the tree of life. Amen. And, but they don't realize that. You see that you, you got up, you got dressed, you put your pretty on or whatever you tried to do, and you just wouldn't sit somewhere and let somebody make you feel like dirt. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. You see that? So we see what they do. Now, 
the, the what the, the the mindset this good and evil is going to automatically employ the letter. It's going to sit you in a house and it's going to use the word of God and it's going to beat you down with the word. But if you get Christ in the midst teaching, you're not going to get the letter, the, uh, the, the Old Testament letter, you're going to get the spirit of the word. You, you see here the difference in that? And that's what people need. We need the spirit of the word. Like 2 Corinthians is 3 and 6, it tells us. Because what? The letter is what? Killing. It tells you the letter kills, but the spirit does what? Gives life. So you're not getting any life. You ever see people just been in church all their lives and just just have the, just, just, just seem to be just so distraught and, you know, a, why would you feel like that coming out of a house of worship if you have worshiped God in spirit and in truth? Amen. Hear that? Okay. Verse 4. Well, verse 5, rather. And Moses, now, now what they're saying, these are the, the religious ones, the scribes, Pharisees. Now, Moses in the law. See this? Told you. It's going to come and put law in front of you that kills instead of the spirit of the word. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says that? I, it's, just, it's just astounding to me that how we don't even realize it, but religion is interrupting the expression of the Spirit of God in operation. You see this? Just interrupting. Just come in the midst of, he's teaching, and they come set her in the midst of while he's teaching. Think about that. That needs to sober us up, and it needs to be converted to where we can understand it in day-to-day. -day. What? Because, like I just finished telling you, it's happening to people all over. So then, it says, they said unto him, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger, wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. Listen. He shut them out. We learned something from the Eastern manner of how they would, while a judgment is going on, one is writing God. And that's so beautiful, Bishop Paul Romano said, because the first man was made from the dust of the ground. And they're just writing God. Before a judgment is passed, God. The focus is just on God. Not what we want to do because we are the, 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 the board of rulers. Not that for that reason. We want to hear from God. What does God want to do in this expression? I told you in certain cultures that the first word a child learns to write is God. So the, Jesus is listening. He shut them out. The, look, I told y'all a long time ago, like David, go where Saul or orders called a meeting and see where my seat, who's sitting in my seat. It's empty. You hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. It's empty. You not he, he shut that out. Because why? You can't listen to God and man at the same time. This is what I'm saying. These, these concepts that we've been taught, well-meaning parents, well-meaning teachers, well-meaning preachers, ministers, all people that kept coming out been well-meaning, but listen, that's not going to help you. We need God. We, we hear the difference in that? We need the Lord family. So, he's listening for God. So, it's, it goes on to say, so when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. So, what did we say? We came together last time about Jesus. Bishop Paul mentioned this morning. He's not going to just start talking and like a lot of people would do, flexing. Well, our religion says this, and your religion says that, and you're wrong because of this, and we're right because of this. No, he didn't start any of that. He made a statement. Why? Because he heard Father say it. He said, what you hear me say, I heard my Father say it. If you see me doing something, I saw Father do it. And that's where the power in life comes in. Right there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So then, what did he tell them? He is without sin among you. Let him first cast a stone at her. Now listen. What did he go back to? Go back to communing with God. Yes. I'm going to tell you what God said. And, and I'm going to go back to communing with God. Simple as that. Bless his holy name. Now, here's something so beautiful. He's not engaging man, family. Y'all hear this? Mm -hmm. He's not engaging man at all. He's, his concentration is on God. Now, we're coming up on something 
where only God can touch. And if we'll just leave stuff alone, stay out of the dynamics of things, just do what God tells us to do and watch what God will do. Now listen to verse Listen to verse um, 8. It says, again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground, continuing to commune with God. Verse 9 says, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, do say, what happened? Here's something working in you. This is why you got to leave people alone. You, that part of God in them where only he can touch, don't try to mess with that. That's, don't try to control that in people. You see the liberty of God when, when the spirit of God is in control. Nobody's trying to control it. Who, who in here been to avoid me? You understand what I'm saying? Who's, who's been in something that unless we volunteer to do it together? You see, you see this right here? And we're led by the spirit of God to do, to do something. To share in love. To, to control what? To control what? Do you see any disorder in this house by the Spirit? I'm talking, I'm getting like Paul. My bold, boldness is in God. You see this? Do you see any disorder? No. no. Why? Because the Spirit of God is in control. Amen. You hear the difference in that? When I need to drag you out, you working <coughs> to another board meeting for what? Watch it. Ask God. Anything I need to know, I can ask God for it. Got a husband who's a bishop, the whole spirit filled and anointed, rest in that thing. So are you all. What do we need to hold a meeting for? Amen. To figure out something. What do we need that for? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. If you don't know how to greet people until you should sit down. Amen. If God called you to do that, look, watch how they do. Watch the order of the house. We ain't never trained them to do that. Amen. What's coming out of what? It's coming out of the spirit. You see that? Hallelujah. We never, we never begged you for this or begged you for that. I learned early on. I watched God from the first day how God takes care of everything that we need in this house. You hear this? Yes, he does. We never made any demands. No, you know you have a family and all that, and still put financial demands on people. Why would we do that? Amen. <clears throat> just to get just to get somewhere for you to meet. You understand that? Hallelujah. I want us to see there's something already in a person if they breathe in God's in them. You hear this? They may not know it, but he is. All right? And they which heard it, being convicted in their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even to the last. You know what? This is how it's going to be, so you better get used to it. Jesus was left alone. Hear that? And the woman, she's still standing where they put her. <laughs> See that? She's still standing in the midst, waiting for somebody to accuse her. There ain't nobody there. See what happens? See what happens when, when, when righteous judgment? Oh, oh yeah, well, we got to. I, I didn't come to do what Moses said. Somebody hear God. That's been fulfilled in Christ in me. I didn't come to do what Moses said to anybody. I don't have any 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 harsh word for anybody. I don't know what you're doing. Listen, that's the that's the spirit's job. You hear that? We used to be in a, a fellowship, and the, the the minister would the the pastor would he would just just stop by any time. Didn't matter what what we were doing. We were family time. Just want to stop by, trying to see what people are doing, trying to see what he's gonna catch you. Look, you didn't catch me doing nothing but what God or that you want me to do. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. You don't, that's not done like this. But people think it is, you know. So, so when, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he, he said unto her, Woman, where, thou, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? That's the question. You know what she said? No man, Lord. This is what I want us to hear. This is why I went back to King James Version this morning. No, the, uh, we read from Phillips it said no one this said no man you need to hear this man with breath in his nostrils no man no man no man no man can accuse you of anything you are the righteousness of God by Christ Jesus you, like, like Bishop is saying over there can't find, find nothing in me 
See that? Hallelujah. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, listen, this is what we ought to have for everybody. For everybody. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and, what? Well, sin no more. That's what he told her. See that? Go and sin no more. But the, the, the key here, neither do I condemn thee. You won't find no condemnation coming out of the spirit of Christ. You won't find it. You will not find it. Oh, but you don't know they're doing this and they're doing that. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm not the author and finisher of their faith. Christ is. See that? I have a duty to express what God tells me to say. But you're not going to find me beating the bushes trying to figure out what somebody's doing in their life. All I want for you is life and godliness. I want you to be peaceful people. I want you to, have, listen, have all that you need. And I know grace will see to it. And you all know in this, this ministry, if you need any kind of help of anything, we, we, that's why we're here. We help us one to another. We, the, truly, we have all things coming. Y'all hear this right here? Amen. Thank you. If you got Christ, you got all things coming. Bless his holy name. Now, I want to look at one other, another, and then one more after that, and we'll be done. Luke 23. I just want to read a few verses, 39 through 42. Because we're going to find criminals, King James called them malefactors, uh, criminals that are going to, when Jesus was crucified, <clears throat> they were hanged as well. So, I want you to hear something. Luke 23, start at verse 39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, Save thyself and us. You hear this? The accuser is something else. Not if thou be Jesus. But if thou be Christ. The anointed one. That's right here in the midst of us now. That's within everyone. See the accusation? If thou be Christ. Save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Doth not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same, listen, comes out of his own mouth, the same condemnation. And watch Jesus, how Jesus is going to respond with, with this condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Today. Now listen very carefully. Jesus, of course, would have heard he's between them. The one saying about them being in condemnation. But one asked, when he come into his kingdom. See this right here to, re to remember him? You see that? What is Jesus' response? Today. Listen. Today, you're going to be with me in paradise. This is something many people look over. Right. Here comes that fire, icy fire, Bishop Paul. P many people look over this. Paradise is this, the garden. The garden. It's a garden. That's what the word means. Paradise is garden. See that? The word garden it itself, Elder D, you touched on this too, like refuge to defend, cover. See how the Lord, it surround, hedge about. See, God made a special place. In Genesis 2, 8 and 9, it reads this. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, now we're going to verse 17 of Genesis 2. The command was, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now this garden is in Eden. Eden means pleasure. We know that. The root meaning um, is, is such words. I said, Lord, I know what, when, when people, when they 
really when they can, however, whatever environment they're in, when they have a home, they try to make it like really a blessed place, like as far as comfort and and, and because that's what what man is doing. He's trying to express what you should be in God. You see that. You can use words like luxury. Those are the kind of words, if you if you really trying to explain what these means, the essence of something, the delight, that's what Eden is speaking to. See that? Today, you're going to be with me, listen, what did he say? In paradise. Listen, this is what Jesus is telling this, this criminal. Today, there's no condemnation anymore. Today, you're going to be right back to your pristine state. Hallelujah. You hear that? Amen. Today, and there's not going to be anything wrong with you. No, I mean nothing. Nothing. You understand that? Oh, you say, well, well he's dead. No, how do you, you, you think so? No, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We better learn to hear. You, look, you're right back where you were at the creation today. People not hearing this, Elder King. People not hearing this, what the Lord has done for us. You see this right here? Right. People are not hearing, people are not hearing just how righteous we, we've been made in the Christ of God. Right. You see this? That's why you got people, religion always has you working for what you already have. If I don't do this, if I don't go go do this at the church, do it. You don't have to do this. The church do it out someplace else. What you gonna do at the church? You you pass by somebody that need help and it's coming to church. So what's what you doing? No condemnation. I want us to, what are we doing these for? We're seeing how Jesus responded in the face of what religion would call condemnation. And what are you seeing? Love and light. Power. Deliverance. See that? Glory to God. Hallelujah. One more. This is the last one. There was a man born blind. John's Gospel chapter 9. Verses 1 through 7. No condemnation here. I want us to hear, hear it. Verse 9 of, of John, John, I'm sorry, uh, John, verse 1 of John 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. His disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Thanks and hallelujah. <laughs> but that the works of God should be made manifest where? In him. You hear this? Well, the first thing, listen, the disciples want to know is where the condemnation? He had to do something. Why is he in this shape? We better hear God. He has listen. He has done anything. What's this whole thing about? That the works of God, listen, should be made manifest. Look in Him. Hear that? He goes on to say, "I must work the works of Him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work." As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Let me tell us something right now with what God is teaching us. Night comes in our lives when we don't realize who I am is in the midst of us. You hear that? When we don't know who God is in the midst of us, you're in darkness. Not just in the darkness, gross darkness. Because we need to know who he is. <clears throat> How would you like to just keep hearing about something, hearing about something, hearing about it, and never experiencing it? How would, I'm just bringing home. How would you like to keep hearing about something, hearing about something so glorious, so powerful, and, and somebody tell you, well, you got to physically die to get to it. Now, you, listen, you got, you, the death you die is to self. And it's taken care of in this cross. You see that? When self gets out the way, then you can see what it is that Christ Jesus has done for us and as us. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 
So then, verse 6 says, When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Well, that was um, so strange. That's one of, those, you know, one of those strange things to us, especially in the West. Mm -hmm. Well, anybody probably. He's he, he going to spit and, and make clay and put it on my eyes. But while you saying, oh, he'd be Mr. Hill. <laughs> See that? <laughs> that word <laughs> spat means clothes. The root meaning of, let me go show it to you. I know some of you have been in the ministry for a while. We, it's not the first time we've heard this, but you need to hear this right here. This needs to be fresh up front in our eyes and ears. Luke Gospel chapter 4. Let me show you something. Luke chapter 4, we'll start at verse, verse, verse 14. <clears throat> I'm going to show you where this word spat is. Jesus did the same thing to a man that was deaf and dumb when he anointed his ears. Now somebody hear God and see what's working. We're talking about the works of God being manifest in this man. All right? He hadn't done anything. Watch, watch, just watch this. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> so, Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, start at verse 14. Now, what has happened up to this point? It's what we call the, the temptation. Jesus has been, what, the Spirit, he, he was led, he was full of the Spirit, led into the wilderness and tempted of the devil. Did, did he come out defeated? No. 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 So, we, we, we read verse 14. It says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. In the power of the Spirit. Hear that? Because you learn a few verses and you quote them. That doesn't mean you're moving in the power of the Spirit. Y'all hear the Lord of the Amen. We got to understand these things. Right. God doesn't want us slamming around like a rag doll. He, he wants his power moving in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region, round about. He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. When he came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet <clears throat> Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it's written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, listen to what he's reading now, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Listen, if you poor, it's in this sense. If you already know everything, your mind is going to be an enemy to the gospel. It's not going to help you. Because the preaching of this cross is foolishness to someone who really doesn't believe. It's not going to make any sense to you and your life will be just, just passed on by you and you'll just be existing and going through some motion, but you think you'll be living. Okay? He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This, listen, when you're brokenhearted right here, it ain't cause necessarily because boyfriend or girlfriend left you for a while. They ain't talking about that. Listen. There's somebody that's really contrite and hard. Yeah. Master, if, if you don't help me now, I don't have any help. Where you at that point, you understand that? Mm -hmm. You're not playing church right here. Glory to God. To heal the broken heart. To preach deliverance to the captives. Deliverance. Completely set free. No matter what you're captivating. See that? Glory to God. And recovering of sight to the blind. Listen. I don't know about you all. I grew up in church. The things that the Lord is revealing unto us in this glorious years in this ministry, I was blind to all that. I was in a good and evil denomination. Had no clue that God was in me. See that? Thought if I said something like that, that would have been blasphemy. See that? Had no clue that God loved me. He couldn't love me because I did some things that, I mean, I just... I'm praying he forgive me, and one of these days when I was standing before the judgment bar, that he just let me slide through. Not that, not that. What, you understand? Was blind. That man that wrote Amazing Grace, that's somebody that, that knew God had intervened, the grace of God had intervened in his life. You hear me? I was blind, but now I see. You see this? Hallelujah. 
This this is opening up the eyes that the, only the Spirit of God can do. Right. You hear that? Right. Hallelujah. Only God can open our eyes to, to who He is and what He's doing in the midst of us. You can come and you can hear this. I've seen people, people have told me, you know, I sat there for years and years and I finally heard it. Yeah. I'm like, well, hallelujah. Thanks. Let's dance a little bit. I'm happy for you. You understand that? Look. To set at liberty them that are bruised. You've been, listen, the in, what we would call, what, what we would call the accuser and, and falling for all the things that that taught us in the religious system and it kept us crushed down, kept us oppressed and we didn't even know why. Lord, how can, how am I expected to live up to what your word requires? How can I do that? What meant for you to do it? It's meant for us to die to self and let Christ do it through us. Paul, the apostle, got it. Glory to the name of the Lord. It's no longer me living. It's Christ living in me. I'm telling you about the cry right now because this really works, family. You hear this right here? You're doing stuff that we're not supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be being. Being. Why? Because our am is in us doing everything. Bless his holy name. And thank you, Father. He says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what is it, where Christ is, is, I mean, is everything, all in and all. I've never given you anything but what I know is Christ. What he, what he brings me into, the consciousness of who he is, that's what I'm sharing with you. I'm not making up anything along the way. I'm telling you what he shows me. Glory to God. Verse 20, this is where we were going. Verse 20, listen to this. And he closed the book. You see that word closed? Mm -hmm. There's a one-time use of it over here in this meaning. And it is the root, this word right here is the root meaning of when it says he spat on the ground. He closed the book, because listen, when he closed the book, it's a done deal. It's all finished, all finished, all finished. He closed the book and gave it again to the minister. And you know what he did? He sat down. When the book is closed, all you got to do is sit down. Ain't nothing else to do. Like when he get finished up here, I'm going to keep going to sit down. You know? And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. I want us to see this. I want to end with this. When he told the man, what, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore washed, and the bottom line we know was what? Came see. Jesus, the Christ, is not going to leave us in any state that is not like him. That's right. You hear this? And he, when we commune with him, we're going to be like him when it's over. See that? What am I saying this for? we got to come to this place where we fully understand God's helping all of us. I'm not trying to tell you how to land it somewhere. I'm here. Y'all better come on with me. I'm not saying that. We, we, we're going together. We're going up in the fullness of the measure of the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. But this is something that I want us to hear. When the scriptures teach us, do you know, do unto others the way you want to be treated. That's how you do other people. We need to we need to, to appreciate this verse more because we don't understand that whatever we do to someone else, it's we're doing it to ourselves, but we don't understand that. You hear that? You hear this? Something. Like the scripture said about Paul, something to, to buffet him. He said, he says it's a messenger of Satan, it's the adversary. Of him. Something has been working like that against me. Every time it come up, I would express how I really feel about this, you know. The Holy Ghost gave me a clear. I I'm tell you right now, it ain't like I think he said. <laughs> you all hear God? It's not one of those I think he said moments. I mean the Spirit of God let me know to stop it. Mm. It's not getting anything but the power you're giving it with your mouth and mind. Y'all hear God? Yes. That's the only power that is given. I thank him so much for that. Mm. I thank him. I mean like almost this this, this. it seems like every time you turn around this okay God's got a higher purpose for us than to be 
dealing with something that's not even there. Right. Right. Y'all hear this? Amen. This is what I'm saying. You will get is you will get so seduced, sucked into it, without even realizing it. You all better be thankful. I'm honest enough to share with you because you have a lot of people standing before you that like they they can't make a mistake. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you <laughs> hey, never. No. Thank God for deliverance. Yeah. For deliverance. Y'all get you you gotta understand, like like I told you, my pastor said, when you're to how you, you you run into a different intellect. Now I'm telling you, if your mind your heart better be true to the Lord. You hear this? This is what I want us to understand. Galatians 6, 7, 8, be not deceived, God's not mocked. But whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Somebody getting on your nerves? And you in your heart telling them all? Those are seeds, thoughts. You sow in that, you'll reap it. Hear that? How do you come up and over that? You stay in the spirit. Stay with the, what you do, put on the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. We keep responding to things in the flesh what, and won't go on to, to, to ever in the spirit. That what you sow is what you're going to reap. Why are you asking God to fix some of you? You're telling it off every day in the flesh. But he that sowed to the spirit shall of the spirit reap what? Life everlasting. Do you want to be in this life flowing constantly in this everlasting life that Christ Jesus is in us? Or do you want this day-to-day -day beat down because something is, quote, getting on your nerves? Just think about it. He said it. We need to hear it. That's all it is to it. I learned this thing now. Ecclesiastes 11 1 says, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Now, why am I saying this? Because actually, what we saw Jesus read in Luke 4, we should be the expression of that. Obadiah, the prophet, tells us there'll be, be saviors that come up to Mount Zion. You know what the saviors are doing? They're judging Edom, the, the flesh. You'll know the difference in what that is. The judgment is this, like Bishop Paul said this morning, we don't judge that word savior and judge is the same thing. We're not helping anybody by criticizing them in the flesh. We, we, we judge and eat them. We're saviors. We come up to Mount Zion for that purpose, to be saviors for Edom, the fleshman. See that? How's that done? Not in and of ourselves. It's Christ working through us. A lot of people have been helped just because we let Christ do it through us. Right. I'm telling you right now, glory to God. See that? Mm. There used to, there was a, I, I told you about this before. Cast your bread upon the water. Let's just right. deal with that for just mm -hmm. two minutes. Cast your bread upon the water. How many remember when Jesus, they had to pay taxes. Jesus said, the first fish you catch, go and first fish, pick him up, you're going to find money in there. And that's what you pay the tax oh. with. The fish's mouth. People in that culture, we do it today. You see it a lot in Europe, the wishing well fountain. People would, they're, they're often, where they'll throw something in the water. There's a special type of fish that would, the way its mouth was made, they would keep the coin in its mouth. You see that? So, after, cast, cast your, after a while, what? It, it'll come back to you. See that? Well, I had a screen saver just pop up automatically. The other day, it was um, rice fields. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. You could, in some areas, far out, you could see the rice coming up. But what happens is, it has to be planted and then buried in water. You know, have you seen it growing that culture like that? They look like just like it's so beautiful. It just cascades down and right. and and but all you see, they look like little individual little ponds. Right. Bread was cast in there, rice. What came up? Rice. Y'all hear this? You sow. Whatever you sow, that's what you're gonna reap. Y'all hear the Lord? Whatever you sow. Especially first thing in the morning, 
Watch what comes out the mouth. If the mind starts to get bombarded with something that is not of Christ, do whatever you have to do to shut it down. You hear that? Whatever you have to do to shut it down. Glory to God. And commune with Him. I think we have the, the lesson that what we do, family, we see it and declare.